Now, Formula 2 will be on the programme at Baku, which will be a bit of a shell shock for some of the rookies who tested luxuriously before Bahrain, no testing in Azerbaijan. One driver who for sure will be prepared, however, is an 18-year-old rookie by the name of Lando Norris. He won the opening round of the F2 series in Bahrain, heading a Carlin 1-2. I spoke to him at the McLaren Technology Centre in Woking about this and that and what makes him tick as a very fast racing driver at such a young age. Lando, thanks for chatting to us. What a time this is. I don't want to tempt fate in any way, but it started pretty well the year, right? So far, so good, I must say. Um, especially on my side of things, F2 started off extremely well. Um, but it's only the start. There's a long season ahead, so... That's exactly um, what you said in Formula 3 a year ago. Yeah, <laughs> and that turned out perfectly, so um, hopefully this year can go the same. But brilliant for you, and also for Carlin, too, to have that one, too. And have a fun. bit of a race with your teammate, race two. What's going yeah, on there? it was fun, especially because Sergio is a very good teammate. Uh, we get along very well. Um, he's very hard working, and I think he's been a, a big asset to helping the team develop, um, especially from the start of the season where we had to learn a lot about the car. Um, we've pushed each other a lot, and he's very fast, so um, it's really helped develop the car and kind of get to the point where we are now and get the one two in, in race one. So. Um, I think the whole team, and especially Sergio and me, were, were very happy. A lot of work went into the new car in terms of the front wing and also the diffuser. What well, is it like running closely with other cars now with that new aero setup? I experienced one race in the old car, um, and it was pretty difficult to, to follow really for, or very closely. Um, whereas this year, it's slightly better, I think. It's, I don't think we've seen the best tracks for overtaking. Mm. Um, I think and in Bahrain, we'll you were limited good. anyway with power because of the temperature thing. Yeah, I think that's just general power, but everyone was in the same boat. So um, there were still overtakes. Obviously, Michael I've showed that very much so in, in race one. I never followed too many people. Um, obviously, race one, I was completely on my own. Race two, I only followed Sergio mm. um, and for a short time, Giotto. So uh, the hardest guy to follow is your teammate, and therefore I couldn't really. Yeah, so difficult to make an him. objective yeah. judgment. How you, what sort of restraints are you putting on yourself, in, if any, in terms of getting ahead of yourself, keeping everything under control one step at a time? It must be, it must be. I mean, the fans are thinking it must be really difficult at the moment for you. Uh, I tend to not uh, kind of overwhelm myself with, every, with anything, basically. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm extremely happy with how the first race weekend of the year went. It's kind of nice that Baku is so different from Bahrain because it's something on which you've really got to focus, I would, I would guess. Yeah, I mean, I've never been there before. <laughs> um, I drove today on the sim and yesterday on the sim, so I'm as prepared as I can be and I probably have been uh, for driving a new circuit and I think that's obviously very important. Um, but it's very different to you know, most other tracks with the long straights and extremely twisty bits in the middle, so um, kind of like Macau in some ways. And um, Poe, you're really good at yeah, Poe too. Yeah, and Poe, so. I like this kind of track, so hopefully it can go well. But it's the sort of circuit which comes alive in race conditions, yeah. particularly with safety cars coming in, brakes cooling a little bit, and that mm -hmm. turn one braking area is yeah. quite definitive as well. So it's, it's a race circuit as much as it is anything else? Uh, very much so. I think in qualifying, obviously, you know, a slipstream and everything will, will help you get a better position, but... You and Sergio planning to tow uh, one another around, do you think? Not yet. It could be on the cards. Um, I think a tow in this car helps a lot, even from mm -hmm. an extremely long way back, and it helped me already in Bahrain um, to get pole position. So uh, it's very effective from a long distance. Um, so I'll be aiming to. I think most people will probably aim to, but it's whether you know you can keep the distance and yeah. them not intrude your lap in any way. So we'll see when we get there. Um, see after FP1 what we're like. Um, but the racing, as you can see from the past few years, has been extremely good. What was it like being a part of the Grand Prix weekend, being on the race card, as it were? And how much time were you able to spend with the team, the F1 team? Uh, well, it was very different, but I tried to not put too much pressure on myself. Especially I don't have to think with... about them all watching yes. you. <laughs> um, yeah, and it was probably like the most pressure I probably was in, um, especially for like qualifying, because qualifying I'm probably most excited for in a weekend. Um, I really enjoy, you know, putting a whole lap together, or trying to, and um, yeah, having to make it inch perfect. When you have a, a bad mood, when, when things haven't gone right, how do you then race on race day? Do you, are you a different person, different driver? Um, well, if I make a mistake, I get annoyed. I get really annoyed with myself. Um, not so much maybe in a race situation, but qualifying, because you have kind of one attempt, 
um, is generally what I've been pretty good at. And it can be quite a big deciding factor for your whole race, especially in Formula yeah. 2. So, but I, What I'm getting at is when you're annoyed, do you drive better, do you think? Uh, the opposite. When I'm completely relaxed is when I'm right. driving at my best. Um, and when I'm in the zone, I'm perfectly relaxed in a qualifying situation, that's when I really do a good job. Um, and I get polled by however many tenths or something. Um, but it's when I put, my pres put pressure on myself and made a mistake in, uh, in qualifying on the first run. Mm -hmm. um, then I get annoyed and for my second run I have to kind of calm myself down a bit. Uh, quite a lot of dramas off the line in this first F2 race. The clutch situation, we yeah. saw what happened with ART. What was it like for you for that first start? Perfect. Yeah, I know it was, but what was it like in the build-up to that? Were there any concerns about how to get it right? Um, the how only much practice could you do? <clears throat> we did a fair bit. I think we did, um, yeah, we did probably one of the most out of all the teams. Um, it's obviously a very crucial part yeah. of, of the whole weekend and uh, the whole race. So we focused a lot in uh, Paul Ricard, Magni Corps, um, wherever to try and get starts in um, because they're not easy. Um, you know, we have two Are they clutches. more difficult than last year? I would say they're more difficult, um, again, in different ways. Last year, we had a more torque, so it was very easy to wheel spin. Right. Um, and even if you bogged down, you could cook quite quickly wheel spin again. Whereas with this car, you would release the paddle, um, to kind of the bite point, then release the other one. And there's an extremely fine line between bogging down. Um, and once you bog down, you're kind of screwed. <laughs> there's not enough torque to get you going again. Right. Or you will spin a lot, like George say, or somehow you get it perfect like I did and you just mm. perfectly slip the clutch. Um, so you're not doing either. You're not wheel spinning or bogging. And um, I think that makes it very difficult. It's very easy to go wrong, um, but I didn't do enough starts in last year's car to have a, you know, know enough to see how right. hard it is yeah, kind sure. of thing. Are you going to do any other racing apart from F2 now that the season's underway? Uh, I would like to. Um, Le Mans is something I definitely would want to do. Um, sadly, I don't think it's going to happen. I think the biggest focus is on Formula 2, um, making sure everything goes to plan on that and not taking any distractions away. You're getting a bit of a reputation now as a videographer and everything that's going on on the video <laughs> side. <laughs> no, you are, Lando. People say, wow, have you seen Lando's videos? And that's great. I, I assume that all was triggered by the whole Ferdinand Habsburg video situation in Macau and, um, and he's leading the field yeah. in this area and you're kind of catching uh, up relatively quickly. Well, we had it planned um, for a couple of years ago with, with We Are Grip. Um, they, they handle all my media and they had a plan to do it um, a long time ago, but we decided it wasn't kind of the right time. Um, there was no point putting pressure on myself and having people around, which I didn't need basically. Um, and I tend to do better when it's calm, there's right. no one. I can just sit down and relax and whatever. Um, so there's no need to have this in such an early point in my career. Mm. Uh, the Ferdinand video from Macau was uh, <laughs> a bit of a trigger to kind of, you know, <laughs> it's a, a lot of people enjoyed it. Okay, one, one final question. Fernando, I'm assuming you get on really well with Fernando. Yeah. I'm wondering if you've had any interaction with other, other Formula One drivers, just being there in Bahrain and how it went. I mean, did Lewis know who you were, for example? Did you see him? Did you? I never saw him. I saw him come into the paddock on his scooter. <laughs> did you wave? <laughs> nope. <laughs> um, it would have been an interesting test to see if he'd wave back, actually. That's probably why you didn't wave, but. Well, because I didn't think he'd wave back. Yeah, exactly, me. yeah. Uh, no, I don't know. I think. Um, Sebastian, Kimi. No, I didn't. I never spoke to anyone. Stoffel and Fernando. It's kind of bizarre, isn't it? There you are, all race drivers, all taking part every weekend, and you haven't yeah, actually met these guys yet. I've, I've met Sebastian, I met Lewis. Um, I spoke to Sebastian a while ago in the FAA Awards, so um, he was a really nice guy, um, a very good guy to talk to, so I have a lot of respect for him. Um, you know, he gave some time away to, to come and speak to me when I was younger. Um, and for an F1 driver, not many F1 drivers do that, so um, he was cool. But apart from that, Fernando and So you're, are you a Sebastian best. fan? Uh, putting you on the spot now. Or a yeah, Daniel Ricciardo yeah. fan? Or putting Fernando to one side, of course. I'm a fan of a lot of drivers. Um, Sebastian uh, is, is definitely one of them because, um, not just because of his racing, but because of who he is off track. I know some people don't think he has the greatest attitude off track. And when you say off track, you mean when behind the safety car? You mean <laughs> <laughs> he whinges a lot and does whatever, but as a person, when you speak to him, 
he's very nice. Yeah. Um, and yeah, sometimes his kind of on track or radio, or whatever, has some consequences. But uh, as a driver, I respect him, and you know, he's he's an extremely good driver, four-time world champion. We haven't really got into Radio Lando yet in terms of what you're saying inside the car. A little bit yeah. in, in F2 coming along, but in those situations like the one he was with with Fernando, mm -hmm. do you think you're the sort of guy that would say what Sebastian said at that moment? Are you a spur of the moment guy like that? Uh, I don't know, because you have to put the effort into flicking on your radio, <laughs> then saying it, and then flicking it back off again. Yeah, but you're also thinking, I want Charlie Whiting to hear this so that he knows. Well, I'm sure he would have seen that. <laughs> I, would, I would shout at myself and probably say, what an idiot or something. <laughs> um, but Do you ever I, shout at yourself in the car for being an idiot? A lot. Did you shout out of the last corner in Bahrain in qualifying? Oh, yeah, there was a lot of swearing going on. Oh, really? Yeah. But you didn't have the button pressed, obviously. No. No, I, I went over the line, um, and then I was like, I apologised to the team because I thought I kind of messed it all up, didn't get pole. Uh, and I was like, I'm sorry, guys, <laughs> messed up. Um, probably could have been pole. And then he was like, well, for the moment, you're pole, so <laughs> everything's all right. <laughs>